This time on Monkey Thieves, Bippin and the Splinter Group try every trick in the book in order to survive. Competition heats up when a rival mob hit the city streets. And a youngster gets caught in the crossfire as cracks from within threaten to tear the Gulta Gang elite apart. On the rural outskirts of the North Indian city of Jaipur, the Splinter Group wake up after a restless night in strange new surroundings. Bipin and the gang have searched for somewhere to live since being kicked out of their old home at Gulta. But this abandoned sanctuary on the edge of the city isn't a place to call home. There's nothing to eat or drink. And last night, they were treated to a terrifying lullaby of snarling creatures prowling the grounds nearby. Yash and the youngsters barely slept a wink. The splinter group are close to breaking point. They can't survive here. All eyes look to their leader, Devdan. The gang's fate lies in his hands. And the pressure shows. Should he go back to Jaipur, where a tough troop of bachelors lie in wait? Where monkey catcher Dana Lal patrols the streets? And where they have to fight for every scrap of food? Or should he head north, deep into the mysterious, misty forest? He has no idea what's waiting there. This could be the biggest decision of Devdan's life. In the distant forest, 90 kilometers northeast of Jaipur, one troop of monkeys couldn't look happier. The whole gang seem well fed and healthy. And there's one monkey here with a special glint in his eye. Gulta Gang Renegade, Zamir. Zamir is one of the biggest monkey menaces Jaipur has ever known. And he didn't arrive in the country by choice. He was chauffeur-driven by the monkey catcher. This is a primate penal colony. A place misbehaving monkeys are brought to start a new life. It can be hard for new arrivals from the city to adjust. There's only one way to work out which berries are safe to eat, and that's to try them. But this gang of exiles are thriving. So Crafty Zamir takes lessons from them. As the gang swing into action, Zamir stays close. He's keen to learn all he can. Farms litter the area. To a city-bred macaque, where there are people, there is likely to be food. But as the exiles move in, all Zamir can see is an old shack. There's no obvious sign of a meal anywhere to him. But the exiles know different. 
Zamir is about to get a Monkey Thief masterclass. Country style. Back at the abandoned temple, Devdon's made up his mind. The Splinter Group are going back to the city. Heading into the unknown forest is too much of a gamble. At least Devdan knows what they're up against in Jaipur. It isn't long before they're back in the outskirts of the city. The familiar sight of electric cables dangling over the streets seems to lift everyone's spirits. Tito takes to the tightropes, and the rest of the group follow his lead. To a monkey on the move, this is the fastest way to get across town. But Bipin and Yash can never resist the chance to show off. As they approach the center, Devdan looks for a place they can sit and beg for food. But they're too late. The best seats are already taken. A troop of Langur monkeys have left their home in the forest to see what the city can offer them instead. They usually survive on a diet of leaves and bark. But it looks like these langurs are keen to get their teeth into something tastier. They've seen people feed macaques all sorts of treats. Now they want a piece of the action too. Devdan looks distraught. The last thing the splinter group need is more competition for food especially from these long-tailed tourists. <laughs> Langurs are considered the true monkey of the epic Hindu story, the Ramayana. Their common name is the Hanuman Langur, a direct reference to the much-loved Hindu monkey god. Langurs are usually more timid than macaques. Not this mob. Devdan's day goes from bad to worse. The visitors even mimic the macaque tactic of snatching food out of people's hands. Bipin looks bewildered. It seems the Langurs have won everyone over. Even balloon sellers cash in on their popularity. The long tail is a giveaway. The splinter group are right back at square one. Someone needs to come up with another plan, fast. At Galta Temple, the Galta Gang elite are in trouble too. They are very short of food. Even Queen Rani is hungry now. At least the youngsters still seem relaxed. Rani's son TJ has found something special. Bathers are happy to share the pools with the monkeys. Whether they're happy to share their clothes as well is another matter. TJ wants a new look. Brown and baggy seems to be the image he's after. Wearing his outfit off the shoulder, superhero style, seems to be the macaque mode of the moment. But while TJ plays fancy dress, his mother Rani has serious concerns. 
She sees the lack of food is causing a rift among her older gang members. Tempers fray. And fur flies. But all Rani can do is watch. As her empire starts to crumble. Back in the country, Zamir grows impatient for his daily lesson to begin. He watches and waits. All he can see is people hard at work. But the exiles know exactly what they're waiting for. The farmers to take a break. Rural robbers sneak in with a stealth and speed any city troop would be proud of. Zamir creeps in last of all. Once he knows the coast is clear. This is what they came for. Ripe white radishes. But one bite and Zamir gets a big shock. They're hot and spicy. White radishes are a favourite food in many homes and an important ingredient in lots of Indian dishes. But it may take a while before Zamir grows to love them. He seems desperate to get rid of their taste. The exiles know they're on borrowed time, so cheap pouches go into overdrive. It's total crop carnage. Stealing food is a taste of the old days in Jaipur. Dodging these dangers is like a walk in the park after living in the city. Zamir even grabs the biggest prize of all as he leaves. The raiders scatter to safety. Their bellies bursting after just a few minutes' work. Fresh water on tap, fields of ripe vegetables, and no monkey catcher for miles. Zamir has never had it so good. Back at Gulta, events spiral out of control. Now even the young are affected. An abandoned youngster is a sitting target for bullies. A bad-tempered older male seizes the chance to display his dominance. With dramatic effect. There's only one way out. The youngster is weak and terrified. He struggles to swim to safety. This is no escape route. He's stranded. His frantic cries echo around the temple. But it seems no one's listening. Even Rani turns a blind eye.
Luckily, someone did hear these youngsters' cries for help when they were abandoned by their mothers in the city. Here, at animal charity Help in Suffering, they receive free lodgings, full board, and round-the-clock care. Today, they're more excitable than ever. A sweet smell drives them crazy. Chapatis are popular in many places, but nowhere more than inside the charity's rescue wing. The chunks can't come quick enough for the excitable patients. Their cheek pouches soon stretch to bursting point. The youngsters should soon be fit enough to be released back into the city. But until then, help in suffering provides the perfect home. Late afternoon in the city centre, the splinter group are starving. But people are on guard for any sign of monkey thieves. Bippin and the gang can't get a look in. To make matters worse, any spare food seems to end up in Langor hands. Devdan seems to have run out of ideas. But Bipin isn't giving up. He spots a golden opportunity. A crowd of people enjoying a siesta. The splinter group might be able to cash in on someone's catnap. Rickshaws are one of the best ways to get around Jaipur, but the heavy iron frames and lack of suspension are very hard on the feet. This rider badly needs a break. But he chooses a dangerous place to grab 40 wings. Bipin has the rickshaw in sight, and more importantly, what's hiding beneath its seat. Dinner the splinter group sneak into action. But unfortunately, they've been seen. Unaware they're being tracked, the gang creep in. They can't afford to wake their victim, but the Langurs want to wreck their raid. It will take more than one spiteful cry to wake this rider up. But the Langurs are too bloated on bananas to bother. The rickshaw raid is back on. Macaques, like Bippin, are experts at stealing in silence. But mistakes happen. Luckily, the blanket cushions the blow. The gang creep in to see what's on the menu. But the dish of the day is a big disappointment. Spicy curry is too rich for most macaque palates. Luckily, the side dish of rice is a bit more appealing. As their victim is so close, the gang's queen, Jaya, feeds in silence. They all do. Even Jaya's daughter, Dimple, keeps the noise down.
The rider has enjoyed a rest. Unfortunately, he won't be enjoying his supper. Not that he knows it yet. The splinter group are still in deep trouble. Forty monkeys can't survive on one portion of rice. Back at the temple, the youngster's plight grows more desperate. All his playmates can do is watch. Escape looks impossible. Until finally, someone answers his call. The youngster is so frightened, he could easily give his rescuer a nasty bite. But the visitor sees how desperate the situation is. He survived today's ordeal. But unless the situation improves, he might not be so lucky tomorrow. Rani's partner, Kamal, also sees his gang are falling apart. And things could get worse. The food at the temple has nearly run out. Kamal may have no choice but to lead his troop into town and scour the streets in search of food. But leaving the home empty is a dangerous business. The temple's fresh springs are a priceless source of water, and many monkeys know it, especially their neighbors. Not all the langurs are in the city. One troop waits for any opportunity to take over the temple pools. Now it's Kamal's turn to make a big decision. Rani and the gang's fate rests in his hands. But while one leader considers leaving Gulta, another may try to return. Devdan. All the splinter group have eaten since they've been back in the city is one measly portion of rice. They desperately need more food, water, and a safe place to call home. All the things they once enjoyed when they lived at Gulta. But Devdan doesn't know just how tough life has become at their old home. And if the Spinter group do go back to the temple, it means going head to head with their one-time rulers, Rani and Kamal. This family feud isn't over yet. Next time on Monkey Thieves, Dana Lal goes undercover to try to infiltrate monkey gangs. Bipin and the Splinter Group set their eyes on a very soft target. And the Gulta Gang elite take a massive gamble when they go in search of food and leave the temple unguarded.